Hey guys, this is for help with review uh, 2.3 and 2.4, B group. I haven't seen you guys for a while, um, hopefully tomorrow, uh, but I will help you with your assignment from, from Tuesday by working on it with the A group. So we're going to go through a few on your, my ears and my eyes. So I've got somebody running a calculator for me. And we are going to write a couple things on the top of this. So do you guys each have a pencil too? Um, I want to make sure number one, and again, A group's been here, but B group, we haven't seen you guys for a while. So um, you don't need your computer. We're not going to enter anything. We're going to kind of just move around. I mean, if you finish it at the end of the hour, then go ahead. But the word and for these means you're going to multiply. So I want you to put that up there. And is multiply. So when we see this word and, that tells us that we're going to multiply. So you guys who are in the room, go ahead and write that at the top of your paper. And then the word or, when we see or, you're going to add. So and is multiplying, or is adding, and this one I'm going to put in a box because it happens more often. Most of the time, champ, you're going to be multiplying. Not all the time. Sometimes it will say or, so then we have to add. The next thing with these is you're going to be making slots. So I'm going to show you with number one what I mean by you're going to be making slots. It says that you flip a coin and then roll a fair-sided dice. So what Nick is doing is two things. It's like I hand him a coin and I say flip it, right? And then I hand you a coin, a, a dice, and I say, Nick, roll it. So there's two things, so we put down two slots. We're flipping a coin, we're rolling a dice. Can you move closer up here, bud? Yeah. Um, I'm recording, though, too, so. We're doing some off of yesterday's, if you have it with you. If you don't, there's one over there. All right, All right. and I'm recording for that B group because we haven't seen them forever. So because it's and, I'm going to multiply, right? And then, champ, I'm doing two things, so I put down two slots. Right? So I hand Nick the coin and I say toss it. How many possible outcomes are there? You flip that coin. Two. So that goes on the bottom of your first fraction. Okay? And then I say, hey, now roll this dice. How many options are there? Six. And this one doesn't affect it. So once he tosses the coin and maybe he gets heads or tails, right? We want him to get heads. So there's one success for one head it's on there, but that won't affect him rolling the dice. So those are called independent. If you're not quite sure what these mean, it's when one of them doesn't affect the other. But if I had like a bag of candy, right, and I had three Hershey bars and just one Twix, and I say pick one, and he picks it and he eats it, right, then on the next pick, that affects it because there's fewer, but these are what are called independent events. The coin toss doesn't affect the dice roll. And then we want to get heads and, what does that say? And the dice is a one. Well, there's only one one on a dice. There's a one, a two, a three, a four. Does that make sense? So all you do with these two, again, this is your, when, with all of these, you're going to put slots down for what you're doing. You're going to get totals on the bottom. And then if it's an and, you multiply. So this would be one twelfth. I'm going to have Nick change that to a percent for me on the calculator. So he's going to do 1 divided by 12. I'm not quite sure how your, uh, Ethan, can you find yesterday's worksheet? It's 2.3 to 2.4 root. And it's going to be point what? 0, 0.8. Okay. And then to get that to a percent, um, do you know, Champ, are you, do you have to write your answers as decimals, percents, fractions, or it doesn't matter? Then this is my least favorite, and I probably just leave the fraction so, because it'll save some time. So we're not going to go do number two. We're going to go down and find another one. And I want to find one where one thing affects the other. Okay, we're going to show you the difference between 7 and 8. All right, so champ, here's what we got. We've got a basket. It's got fruit in it, right? 
first thing you have to do is figure out well how many options are there so you have to read it carefully which is kind of a bummer but you have to read that there's three apples three peaches and four pears in here so what do you think you're going to do with those numbers before we even move on he's going to add them up yep you need that grand total and we said that always goes on the bottom of the fraction so he's got 10 pieces of fruit and i say all right champ pick one right we want to find the probability that it's an apple. So you're going to go like this for the first pick. Or, now what did I say on the top of the notes we do for or problems, Nick? Add. Add. Yes, exactly. So you put slots down. He's going to do two picks. And I want to know what's the probability that it is an apple or a peach. There's 10 pieces of fruit to choose from. Right? How many are apples? That goes on the top. Or, out of the ten, how many are peaches? Read it careful. It says an apple or a peach. Three. Yep, so see it's the same process. We put down the slots. We put our total on the bottom. Nick said to add because it had the word or in it, right? If it had said and, I'd multiply. So three tenths plus three tenths is six tenths. I'm not sure if on the computer, um, Nick, that you have, if you're doing a fraction, I think it has to be simplified. So on the calculator, I'm going to tell you how to do that in case you don't like to do it on your own. On fractions, usually they just do uh, dash and they put fractions. But do you have to reduce this fraction? Uh, I doubt yeah, it. I think you do. So if you go to the calculator and go 6 divided by 10, but don't hit enter, then hit the math button. It's right here, the third one down. Do you see where it says math? Yeah. And hit enter, because the top thing says frac, and it'll reduce it for you. So it's math, enter, enter. Three fifths. Now this one was an easy one to do, because they both are even, so you just divide them two out. But sometimes if the fractions are like 114 over 620, I would just math, enter, enter on the calculator. Now this looks like the same problem, almost. It's got fruit, but this time five apples, seven peaches. I'm going to have Nick pick one, but he's going to eat it. Okay, so he's not putting it back in the basket. He's going to eat it. So when we start off, we have five Apples, seven peaches. Champ, you know what I'm going to do with those numbers, right? What am I going to do? Add them. Twelve is my total possible for my first thing I want to happen. Right? It says, what is the probability that the first piece is an apple? And then it says, and, champ. So will I multiply or add? Thank you. So we're getting it. This isn't so bad, right, Nick? Now be careful with your denominator. So watch what we're going to do here. It says that the first piece is an apple. So right off the bat, Nick has five possibilities of getting an apple. Does that make sense? Ethan, can you put that away, please? Yeah. All right. One of my friends texted because he thinks he's not in the right. All right. So now if I give, Nick eats one, one of them. He, he pulls out the apple and he eats it. He's like still hungry and he's going back for another. But this is no longer 12 because it affects it. That's what your teacher means about dependent and independent. The fact that he ate it is going to knock down one for his next pick. So you put an 11 right there. What do you think about that, champ? This one we kept the 10 because we didn't need it. Okay? But on this one, he ate it. So one of these apples is out of here. We're down to four apples and seven peaches. Okay? So what do you think I'm going to put on the top of this fraction? Uh, the, the, the peaches. Yes. Thank you. And again, we're multiplying because this is an and problem. So Nick's going to go to his calculator. He's going to go 5 divided by 12 times 7 divided by 11. Math. Enter, enter. And it's going to reduce it to a fraction for us. 35 over there we go. Now, if I wanted the percent, if you have to enter the percent, we know how to do that, right? You just divide it out. 
So do you see the difference between seven and eight? I'm getting to the point where I think I'm going to have you guys you're listening so well today. I think I might have you try some more on your own after we do one more. All right. Let's try a marble one. Okay, number nine. So first of all, we need to figure out how many I'm choosing from. I've got nine red and three green in bag A. Bag B is nine black. So I always circle these numbers. Like I'm highlighting it, but you guys should circle them as you read through it. Bag B, so here's bag A, has nine red, three green. Bag B has nine black and six orange. It says, find the probably, probability of selecting one green marble from A and, that's a key word, why am I highlighting it? Multiply, okay? So we're gonna start. First thing we wanna do is pick from bag A and then from bag B. You have to put the slots down, okay? So in bag A, we're just dealing with this bag, right champ? So what do you think I'm gonna do with the nine and the three? I'm going to pick from that bag. I'm going to add them up. There's 12 total possible things I could pick, correct? It says selecting a green from bag A. So what's going on the top of here? A green from bag A. Three. Thank you. Now, he's going to a different bag. It's like if I had Nick on the last one go to a different bag of fruit. It doesn't matter that he ate one out of the first bag. Right? So if we're going to the, another bag, those are called independent. It doesn't matter that you picked out of this bag, correct? So we're going to go over to bag B, Nick, and how, what am I going to do with the 9 and the 6? Add them up. There are 15. The fact that you ate one out of this bag doesn't affect it. Now, if they were in the same bag, I'd have to knock it down to 11. So you have to read it really carefully. And I want to get a black one. So what's going to go, Ethan, on the top of this one? Uh, yeah. Nine. Okay. So, Champ, do you see why, again, it's super, if you pick them apart, I'm doing two things, put down two slots. It was and. I'm going to be multiplying. I need the total for the first one, and then I have to decide if it affects the next one. It doesn't. I mean, two separate bags. So that's why I didn't knock anything down. All right. So, we're going to go down to another marble one, and I want you guys to look at number 11 and try to set up part A. So, I want you to read it, circle the numbers that are important. By the way, this comma right here means and. It means probability you get orange first and then green. And this is really important. Without replacement, do you know what I'm what they mean by that? You pick it and you hang on to it. You don't put it back in the bag. So it's like if I handed you a, this bag. And if you take one, go ahead, take one. Without replacement and eat it, go ahead. It knocks it down one. Does that make sense? <laughs> Now, if I said put it back in the bag and replace it, I got the same amount in here. So it says without or with replacement. Here you want one, Jim? It's going to affect the denominator because you guys did replace those, and this bag just went down to blue chocolates. See what I mean? Now, if I said put it back, put it back, put it back, if it had replacement, right, then it won't affect it. So see if you can get this A set up by yourself, guys. You're going to be making two choices. You want probability of orange and then green. And we didn't put them back in the bag. So let's put slots. And means you're going to multiply. You need totals on the bottom. And you have to decide if you need to knock the total down if you do not replace them. And this first one that you're doing on your own, I'm just going to go through it with you just a little bit and see how you did. So 
Well, let's make sure it's set up, right? Nick's still working it out. Ethan, are you going to participate? Awesome. All right. I think I gave you enough time. So I'm going to go over here and put my two slots down because I'm doing two things, right? It's an and, so I'm going to multiply. First thing I need to do is figure out how many total I have. So hopefully you guys added up figure out how many were in that bag of chocolates yeah, before I had to pick. Yeah. That goes here. Don't put a 10 here unless they put it back in the bag. Yeah. But they didn't. So what should go right here? Nine. Nine. Awesome. Now you have to go back and see, well, what do I want? I want to get an orange. So on the top will go my oranges. Two. Excellent. And then for the other one, I want to get a green. Now, the fact that I picked an orange and kept it doesn't knock the greens down. See? So I, I don't need, I, you always have to think about that, though, because if it had said green and green, then I'd have three and then, oh, there's only two left. Again. So you got to be careful. But those don't affect each other. And we needed a calculator. Um, Nick, it's going to be six over 90, but that will reduce. So make sure you work your calculator correctly. You go six divided by 90. Math. Enter, enter. 115th of a chance. Okay, whoops, that was this one. All right, now be really careful, guys, with B. I'm going to talk you through C because that's harder than you'll have to know how to do. But for part B, if it's purple and then purple, then you don't put it back. I want to see if it, this would be purple and purple, and you're not putting them back in the bag. So you pick a purple and you hang on to it. And then you go back to the bag and you want to get another purple. So I want to see if you can set that up and decide what you knock down, what you keep the same, if anything. So Ethan's my guy on this one. Are you ready? So I, I go up to you with these, this bag that's got these 10 in it, right? And you're going to do two things, two slots. It's purple and purple, so we multiply, right? We still need to figure out how many he's picking from, so at the bottom is still a what right here? Just Ten. Ten, perfect. Now, okay, so the first denominator is always the grand total, okay? Then you have to decide, and this one, because it says without replacement, I know I'm going to be holding on to a purple, so what's this going to be? Nine. If it said with replacement champ, though, then you put the purple back in the bag. So you'd be back at 10. Does that make sense? So you have to think about that. Now, we're going to pull a purple out. So champ pulls, or Ethan, I'm sorry, pulls out a purple. There are five of them. Yep, so right? Now there's four. Yes, excellent. But now he's got a purple in his hand, and he's not putting it back. So on the next one, what did you just say, Ethan? Four. Is this making sense, guys? Yep. So that's five. It's 20 over 90, which well, when he does it on the calculator, it's just going to be two nines. I thought you could just do five. You can do that, too. You can start canceling like this if you'd like and call that one over two. No, like and five, two, six, two, one, so that's four. Eighteenths, same thing. Four. Now, if you did this on your calculator, remember, if you're asked for a percent, if Nick divided these on the calculator, it's going to give him 0.222222. You might say, how does she know that without a calculator? The nines always do that. One ninth is 0.11111. Two nines is 0.22222. What do you think three nines is? Three repeated, which is a third, which makes sense, right? Four nines is 0.44444, so that's just a math thing. But then you put as your percent, scoot one, scoot two. It'd be about 22% chance. Does that make sense? All right. Now we're going to go do this one. This one's really hard. These two you need to know how to do for your test. This one's a, like a one for people who are like, hey, this is too easy for me. This one's kind of hard. So we'll figure. Do you want to do this one or do you want to go try an easier one on your own? Let's do it. All right. The first marble is purple. All right. Here we go. Tend to pick one. That wasn't so bad. Right? Eight. How many are purple? 
How many? Five. Five. Mm -hmm. I have a five out of ten chance of getting the purple. And, so what am I going to do? Multiply. Multiply. The second is any color except purple. And I'm holding on to a purple one. So what's going to be on the bottom of this denominator? Five. Nine. Or nine. Yep, what's going to be on the top? Five. Why? Because you got three and two and then never sub which one. Yeah, exactly. You got this. Perfect. That wasn't so bad, was it? Not too bad. All right. Um, 25 over 90. 25 90ths. And that will reduce. So Nick's going to math. Enter, enter it for us. Okay, here are the 18s. Now, you guys do need to start doing some of this on your own because um, the deck of cards is a little tricky because you're probably not comfortable with cards, but I want us to go down here and I want you to try setting all four of these up for number 13. We're back to the marbles, which to be honest, I bet you're on your test, it's probably going to be the marbles because they're easy to count up, it's easy to test you on, right? The cards, it's a little harder, but. So go ahead and read what's important. And remember, what did I say this comma means? What word does this comma mean? Probably red and then white, yep. And this is really important, right, champ? Why is it important that you're not replacing them? You're not putting the chocolate back in the bed. It will, not. It will. yep. If you didn't hear him from home, he said it's going to knock it down. Okay, so I want you guys right here to try all four of these, then we'll go check them, and then it's going to be time to go off to science. And those those of you who don't have a calculator, that's okay. Um, remember, these are all slots. One slot. This one's going to be three slots. Wait, it says red then what or like? It would wait, be a red I, and how then I know a white. Multiplication. Mm -hmm. How do I know it? Because is? that's what the comma means for the notation. Oh. Yeah. If it was or, it'd say red or white. Oh. But the comma means and. So this is red and red and red, blue and blue and white. If it was or, it would say. If you're watching this from home, they're doing these four. We're trying to see if we can get maybe at least two of the four correct. Four or four would be awesome. Good, Nick's done. So I think, and just for time reasons, because my clock's off and I have to let you go, we're going to cruise through, okay? Yeah. First thing we need is a total. What's our total? Yeah. That goes on the bottom of all of these. Agreed? Uh, also, we're not replacing it. So what's going to be right here? Yeah. I'm not yeah. replacing it. Yep, not replacing it. Now be careful with this one. Eight. Thank you. Nine, Nick, and then eight. Excellent. So do you see how that flowed? It was really important. If it said replace, guys, all these denominators would be 10 because that chocolate's going back in the bag. Okay? So now it says red. Red. Two of them. The fact that I picked a red doesn't affect how many whites there are. Those are what your teacher would have called independent. So what goes on top of this one for my whites? Three. Okay, and I'll let you guys take care of that on a calculator because we don't have time. Blue, five. That won't affect me picking a red. So five and then two. Perfect, guys. Now be careful with this. Be careful with the red and the red and the red. Watch what happens. Two red, one red, and then there are, do you don't have a, 
there's no, that's zero chance. You can't get a red and a red and a red when there's only two reds in there. Did you do that one right? Yeah. Excellent. You can't, it can't happen, right? If you are a betting man and you bet I'm getting three reds, you're going to be broke, <laughs> right? Can't happen. Now let's see if the blue and the blue and the white can work. Blue, five, right? You're holding the blue, so it affects the blues. Three, um, four. Four, yes. You're holding a blue and a blue does not affect the white. Three, two, excellent. You guys need to multiply those all out. You need to head to science. You were great today. Awesome. Wait, Keep in mind, this is your assignment from yesterday. So if you're like, I got this, what should you do with this assignment? Finish it, because I'm not going to do any more of these, right? So is, um, I don't know what you're doing today. So is one, two, uh, you, the, the, you have to watch, if you didn't watch video notes today, you need to, because they'll tell you how many you need to do. My guess is these were the examples they did in class. So maybe you should watch those if you didn't. You want to see why I was late to class today? No! I need you to not be late to science. Go! Oh, no. I like it. Did you get a new one? Oh, you're messy. Clay. Yep. <laughs> yep, I I've seen that bath, before. I'm trying, to, my, uh, I'm trying to get the clay off. I was yeah, like, oh, my son me. took clay a couple years ago, and it's, it's from, messy. Yeah. Like, do we have an accident? Anything. Hurry up, Miss Anderson's missing you. Yeah. I've always been so bad for an art, like ever since I was little.